salespeople tell you it's always about price. Our line is it's almost never about price, but it's always about value. What is value? Am I gonna get my money's worth out of it? Because whether, if you're, I don't care what your product is, a good one and a bad one are both expensive. Are they gonna spend a lot of money for a bad one of whatever you sell? I don't care if it's a tub, if it's gutter system, if, if it's a roofing, siding, windows, doors, kitchen cabinets, doesn't matter what it is. Isn't a bad one expensive? So, and it can be more expensive. So it's always about value. So how do you uncover the prospect's value systems? So here's some simple answers. First of all, you gotta figure out what they're gonna base their decision on. You can go give a presentation for 90 minutes. What is the most important part of that? People say to me, are you telling us that we should skip parts of the presentation and only say certain parts? No, no, but if you ask enough questions to find out what the, the, the we'll call them the hot buttons are, to use uh, someone else's words, uh, if you find out what's more important to them, uh, you'll find out you can make greater impact. Now, how do you find out? It just can't say, so what are your hot buttons? Can't do that. Now, people will say, let me tell you, I only care about the price. And sometimes they'll look at me and say, really? All I got to do is give you a low price? I'm gonna, you're going to just hand me the business? That's it? And they'll say, oh, well, no, some other things. Uh, Oh, no, I wonder how long you've been in business. Uh, and so they, oh, okay, and what else? Okay, and what else, and what else? Okay, pretty simple. So, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting how we create some of these things by asking the wrong questions. And that's really what we're going to talk about here. What are the right questions? What are you doing during the property inspection and the analysis? So let me throw some things out to you that uh, are not in the book. One of them is it's creating prospect conversations. Why do you think people tell you they have to think it over? Are they really gonna think it over? Is that what people do when they go to sleep at night? I hope not. So uh, what is it about? And the answer is, they're really saying to you, we want to discuss this without you here. Now you can say, okay, well, I'll go outside. I'll, let me go outside, I got a couple calls to make, uh, and let me know when you're finished. You can do that too. But let me ask you this question. Wouldn't it be more efficient if I could convince these two homeowners to have the conversation in front of me? Now, how do you do that? Let me tell you, you don't do it at the end. It's something I get you in the habit of doing early. I know I'm probably the only person in here that's been to a, a marriage counselor. Well, right? When you go to a marriage counselor, and you know a guy like me has probably had a lot of it. So when you go, to, I mean, I'm funny, but living with me every day, that's another whole ball game. So what happens when you go to marriage counseling, for those of you who have not, is you, you can't talk to each other. That's why you're there, to converse with each other through this intermediary. That's why you're going there, because you can't work things out. So the therapist will ask you some questions. And they really have something to do with you and your spouse, but you don't talk to your spouse. Uh, why do you feel, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm sick and tired, I went, yeah, and now he says, so how do you? And she's, oh, Mr. Smart Guy here, you know, he comes and goes, comes home two days, and he thinks we should all wait on him. And so this is how this conversation is going. How does the therapist know that she has healed you? It's when the therapist asks a question and you turn to your wife and you answer the question directly to her because that says you don't need the therapist anymore. You gotta have some comfort in that. You have to now also trust the therapist. Isn't that what we're doing? Because, listen, think about this for a minute. If you took 100 homeowners, and let's assume there are two of them, there aren't always two. Let's take 100 homeowners and put them into a separate room and say to them this, write your next five projects around the house. What are the chances the lists are gonna be the same? Pretty much zero? What are the chances the top two are gonna be the same? Pretty much zero? All right.